Happy Slurs Day, everyone. Today, we're going to be looking at this. So this is an excerpt from a piece I wrote specifically for Tap Space's virtual drumline composition contest that they put on in 2006. So the idea behind the contest was to kind of write a lot jam or a cadence using virtual drumline as your playback. And at the time, I want to say VDL, or virtual drumline, was maybe a year or two old at that point. So I think they were looking for a way to kind of showcase composers who use the sound library and just kind of show, showcase what the sound library is capable of in the uh, marching percussion realm. So fast forward to now, it's, I mean, this library is all over the world. Uh, you can hear it in plenty of commercials. There's a lot of um, film composers that use the library. Um, and then also, it's a fairly standard library that people use for marching, band arranging, winter percussion arranging, and any, any sort of marching arts arranging. And even concert concert compositions, they have a pretty extensive concert library too. It's uh, And it's, relatively inexpensive uh, in terms of sound libraries go so maybe be sure to go check it out if you're interested in kind of diving into arranging and composing uh, percussion music so uh, anyway the pieces were uh, kind of adjudicated by a panel and I think it was a blind panel not that they were blind but that the pieces I think didn't have our names on them and they were adjudicated based on I would assume compositional creativity because I mean, essentially, you're not you're not grading any sort of performance because all the pieces they should play back perfectly every time, as it's just a, it's a sound library. But uh, anyway, the piece uh, that I wrote was entitled "The Old School," and it was essentially kind of billed as a a brief concerto for mylar snare soloist with drumline accompaniment. And I say I use the term brief because the I believe there's a limitation on how long your your piece could be I think it was two minutes and 30 seconds or, or something along those lines so it had to be very brief compared to uh, normal concertos which can last between 15 and 30 and sometimes even longer than that 15 30 minutes um, so kind of the idea behind this piece is I utilize a specific sound set that they had which was basically uh, samples of a marching snare with a a mylar head or a plastic head which kind of has a sort of sound that was more old school before the more common Kevlar heads um, that people use today have on their drums so uh, the idea is that I use this sort of mylar soloist mylar snare solo sound um, as a soloist and then the accompaniment rather than being like an orchestra or a band or uh, something like that is the accompaniments actually the the marching percussion section. So we have snares, tenors, and bass drums. And um, I kind of, man, I veered off, uh, kind of on the deep end with this with this piece. I kind of used um, just some of some untraditional things. Like I, at one point, I split up the voicings of the the bass drum so that like they're all on their own staff and had like five different voices going on at once. There's a lot of kind of non-traditional slurred rudiments which I kind of used in the solo. Uh, snare part to kind of create some some differentiation between the um, the marching ensemble and the soloist and uh, surprisingly even though it kind of veered away from that normal sort of lot jam or cadence uh, and ended up getting second runner-up in the contest which is pretty awesome and then of course my my good friend Freddie Smith who I marched with at Santa Clara Vanguard ended up winning the competition look at that handsome face but yeah, you can check this uh, the, the piece in its entirety at my YouTube channel. I'll link that below, and I'll link it in the um, in the uh, description on the uh, post here. And you can you basically just watch a, a a playthrough of it. And if you're interested in, in performing it, um, my score the score and parts are going to be available on six to five productionscom which is my company. And um, it's a very it's a very difficult piece, so. Um, Good luck if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna try and play it. That's all more power to you, and uh, please send me a recording if you if you end up diving in and playing it. So, so the lick in question is uh, part of the the snare part, the traditional snare part, and it basically kind of as a basis has quintuplets in there, and um, the way it's written. Uh, on the page there, it kind of works as a nested tuplet, which we went over, uh, I think, a few slurs days ago, which is basically a, a tuplet within a tuplet. Okay, so to break this one down, if we were to do a traditional 
sort of interpretation of this, you'll see that it is, um, and I'm just gonna play the second grouping of quintuplets. Um, you essentially have that left, right, left, and then a tap six stroke roll. Bum, 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 bum. One, two, three, four, five, one. Okay, so that's kind of your just your traditional with the tap space, tap six, uh, yeah, tap six stroke roll, uh, which gets you your five notes in the quintuplet. Uh, so to, we kind of are doing like a like a double slur in this one, in a sense that um, if we could we could slur what we just played with the traditional one and have it be uh, a sextuplet which you can kind of see in this next example, which would be basically the bum, 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 da instead of da, 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 right? So we're kind of slurring that out, we're spreading that out. But I wanted to take it a step further, and you can see I wanted to kind of include that third accent of the quintuplet in the slur. So you can kind of see how that's circled there, but have that be ba 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 da So have so that that becomes seven notes over the span of what would normally be um, six sixteenth notes in that quintuplet. So you end up getting this sort of right that kind of just kind of falls into itself <clears throat> just a little bit. So it was just a fun little fun little like double slur thing that I thought would be really cool as kind of like a solo lick in there, and so. Yeah, just kind of getting creative with it, and hopefully, you know, something like that gives you some ideas when you uh, do your compositions and, and arrangements. Um, cool. So, like I said, go check out the check out the piece on my YouTube channel, and have a happy Slurs Day. We'll see you next week. Also, be sure to check out next week. We're gonna have our 20th episode, and I've got something really special planned. Uh, you're not gonna want to miss it. So, be sure to be back next week. We'll see you. Thank you.